Hi everybody, it's Dia. Today I'm gonna to show you how to do water drops on white paper. Now water drops are relatively easy, even though they look complicated. And today, what I'm gonna to use to draw them is like really basic supplies. This is a Bic mechanical pencil. You can get it at any store from Target to Staples. Um, I'm gonna also have on hand, in case I need it, a Vanish eraser, which happens to be my favorite. Large area eraser. I'm gonna keep on hand a Graphic Gear 500 Pentel pencil with 0.3 lead. Oh, I should have told you that the Bic pencil um, has 0.7 millimeter lead, which is larger, and that's what I'll use to start. Um, I'll also use, if I need it, a Mono Zero Elastomer Eraser, which is by Tombow, which I love. And you can see from the point that you can get into very tiny little spaces. And it's also very cool in my opinion because it's kind of like a mechanical pencil. You can push it out or push it back in. Anyway, I love it. Now, to draw this basic outline, I used a Copic multi-liner. You can use whatever thin liner you want from Crayola to Copic. This one is 0.1 and it's waterproof. So to start, I'm gonna use the Bic mechanical pencil and I'm gonna start on the outer edge. Actually, it's the interior of the outer edge though. Now I'm gonna assume that the sun or the light source is coming from this direction. And I'm gonna start very close to the edge. I'm gonna go all the way up to the edge. And I'm not gonna to push too hard to begin with, although this edge will be one of the darkest places in the entire drop. I'm not gonna go the full level of darkness that I can just because I like to work the area first. I like to find out how far I'm actually gonna go with the light source and how I think it's gonna turn out. So this is your first step. I'm going back in and I'm gonna make the edge a little bit darker. Now I, I go with this crescent, with this dark crescent shape, about halfway around. Now this is convenient because it's got this center part of the blade of grass that's sort of acting as an indicator. It doesn't always work out that way, but in this image, it's kind of nice that it actually does. Now I'm getting lighter as I go. And since the light source is coming from here, I'm going to add a space I'm gonna leave blank, that's gonna indicate a reflection. So I'm not gonna color that at all, I'm just gonna color around it. Now, as you can see, I'm getting lighter and lighter as I get towards this edge. Now, if you color carefully enough, you might not even have to use the blending stick. You can change here to a harder pencil and that makes it easier for the pencil to look lighter in the image. Not everybody has a variety of lead hardnesses, so for the sake of ease and for the sake of showing you that you can actually do it, I'm just gonna stick with this pencil. 
I'm getting lighter and lighter as I get to this edge. Now you can also see that there's a line in the center, like I said before, and I didn't make the line within the dot because as you know, water has a tendency to make solid objects move. And I'll, it's a, it's refraction. Like when you put something into the pool, like when you're skimming the pool and the stick looks like it's in two different places. This is, I'm assuming, I'm not quite sure of the scientific name for this, but it's like refraction. So rather than going straight across, I'm going to take the pencil and I'm going to make this into a curved line. And I'm going to skip that because that's a reflection. And that gives the drop more of a rounded feel. I'm going to go back and I'm going to darken up this edge. Now I always feel more comfortable to make things a little bit darker after I go over it the first time. I don't know why. That's one of my coloring and drawing habits. I'm sure you have a few of your own. And then I'm going to go over the whole area again. Make it a little darker. Now, since the light's coming from this direction, there'll be a shadow that comes off of this end of the drop. Now, you're gonna start the shadow on the outside of the drop, and that's also gonna be a very dark area, just like this one was on this droplet. And you're gonna bring this dark part on the side up to where you stopped the other dark part on the interior of the drop. And just like on the other part of the drop in the interior, as you move away, you're gonna get lighter and lighter. I'm gonna blend this a little bit just to show you the difference of what it looks like with the blender and without. And I'm using a really light touch here because as you'll find out, if you're using a soft lead, it blends really quickly and it gets darker as you blend it. You can use what's left on the um, on the blender to make the shadow larger. You don't even have to add more lead or graphite. Take this eraser, 
and I'm going to clean up the edges a little bit. So as you can see, it's pretty simple to draw a realistic drop. Now, I'll tell you the steps really quickly one more time before I move on to the next. Here's the first image. Like I said, you start on the side, move it more and more into the drop, and get lighter as you move across. And don't forget to leave that area where there's an indicator, or I'm sorry, where there's, where there's an indication of a highlight. And then he's gonna move across even more, gonna leave a little bit of a white edge or a very light edge at least, and then go in with the shadow on the opposite side of the drop. That's a very basic drop. Now, here's an image from one of my books. I tried to recreate that drop, this drop, on the paper that I just did. Now, this one's a little bit more detailed. You can see I left some uh, little tiny additional reflections over here. And I'm just going over it quickly for you. So you can see, um, a little bit more detail. Now here's that here's that line that I was telling you about before, that curved line. Now if you want to add some lines to the grass, if you want to make your coloring image a little bit more detailed, you can even do it with the water drops. So let's say we're adding dimension and details to the grass. It's pretty straightforward. On the regular part of the grass, but then beneath the water drop, you have to take that curve into consideration too. So these lines of the grass would probably show up if you look very closely. So you're gonna come on the side of the drop curved, just like you did with the initial line. Adding some of these extra lines even makes the drop look more curved. Pretty realistic. I can take your blender, leave those little dots. And you don't have to worry about it being perfect. I'm gonna make the area around this highlight a little darker. Add some more detail. Adding this background detail also makes the water drop stand out. And as I'll show you in the next picture, if you add color, it even stands out more. You know what, in this image, I'm gonna even make the shadow under the drop darker. And don't be afraid to go really dark on those two edges. Now 
Now you saw the image with just regular lines, regular line drawn here. Then if you add all these extra details, you end up with more of a grayscale look like this picture. Now this is the exact same image that I added grayscale to from that book, Coloring Dreams, that I did. Let me see if I can get this closer, if you can see more of the picture. And every one of these drops, including this drop, that looks like more like a tear, is exactly the same, except rather than drawing it in a circle, I drew a tear first. Did the dark here, here, and left the highlights. Now, here's an image completely colored. This was done by Rhonda Francis. It was the exact same image from grayscale to color. The same outline, and what was done was uh, some greens, light, dark, or, or just added onto the grayscale. I'm using Conti. Um, charcoal right now, but I think Rhonda used prism color. So that's basically it about how to draw water droplets that are realistic. I hope you liked it. I hope it works for you. Um, if you like the video, please subscribe below and give me a like and uh, I'll see you soon. More to come. Thank you so much. Bye.